Hey, welcome back to Less Than 60 Miles to a quick little update here as we get into the second turn. And I'm not going to bother recapping what's gone on up here with this disengagement and all the rest of it. We'll, we'll deal with that at some other point. Let's have a look at the bombardment phase of the game. Interestingly, interestingly enough, the these US units here are in a city and makes them very hard to detect. And that is thwarting the Soviet ability to lay some missile action down on these guys to soften them up before any potential combat. But on the flip side of that, the US is able to get a detection level two on this little stack of guys right here. Uh, there's a recon unit under there and, uh, and that tank battalion or tank company or tank regiment, whatever it is. Yeah, regiment. So <clears throat> there was no AA, sorry, there was no uh, bombardment by the Soviets under this hex to soften them up. They're going to need to get something adjacent to it before they can do that, which means we're going to be well into turn three before we get to actually uh, do any bombarding here, which uh, is going to be problematic for the Soviets. That said... The Soviets have allocated some uh, electronic warfare uh, uh, combat points, uh, combat support points to this HQ. And they have converted and also flip mode to deployed mode. And so when it, so the Soviets go first with their bombardments. They're not doing any. We're now going to do the US bombardment or NATO bombardment. And they're going to fire their uh, missiles from the 133rd. Uh, one 333rd missile uh, battalion, these guys. And they're going to use, I think I used uh, three air points. Uh, they got one <clears throat> at the beginning of the turn. Uh, so that gave them six in total, I believe. So we're going to use three there. And four from the missile uh, unit and gives us a total of seven uh, factors to go ahead and attempt to do this um, uh, barrage and we'll we be barraging on the two column the two detected level two and that would give us uh if i rolled an eight which i did it would give us uh a, a no no uh, what is that left number attrition affl afflicted upon the points attrition points inflicted on a support unit and there uh, would be no effect on the combat unit. It's a zero slash one, but a red result means that it's half engaged. So we're gonna put a half engage marker down here. And if I had a support unit, like an artillery unit in that hex or whatever the case may be, then we would apply uh, an attrition marker to it. But what we've done here is half engage this unit. But before that attack gets to go in, Let's not forget, we've got to do AA, right? So these aircraft came in and flew, flew their mission. And they uh, had to defend against the AA in the hex. Uh, so they did that. And that caused one abort, which is going to reduce the combat value of this attack. And the reason why I'm telling you that after the fact is that the net results are the same. Because when we go down one column on an eight, uh, an eight uh, rolled, it's still in the five to six column versus the seven to eight column and the results the same as zero slash one. So we've half engaged that unit. So what, what did the uh, Americans achieve there? They've put this unit into a mode that's going to uh, force it to slow down and make it more difficult for it to attack. So when they now go to look at trying to move into Fulda and maybe cross the river, sending this recon unit across the river, because I think this would be uh, three movement points to here plus two for the screening because this dude is screening. So we have to pay two movement points. So here we get five to here. Sorry, did I say five? Yeah, three plus two is five. And he's going to cross the river and it's going to be another three. So that's eight and then two more for the screening and then two more for the river doing a hasty crossing. I already rolled for, for attrition, doing a hasty crossing here, an unprepared crossing, whatever the thing, whatever it's called, and I didn't in, didn't pick up a an attrition point. So they would spend twelve movement points, I believe. That all added up correctly, uh, unless I have to stop when I f enter the first screening uh, screening hex, and I'm going to just double check that right now. 
Yeah, that's that's indeed correct. This movement is correct. We're not uh, having to stop when we enter the first screening hex. We just pay it two, two additional movement points. So there we have the one, two, three, four. Oh, I just realized something. Uh, I just realized something. This air unit, this uh, unit here is one, two, three, four. It's out of range. So I'm just going to, just to keep this consistent. So we are indeed following some of the rules, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna move my my air, my air coverage one hex that way. I don't think it's a big deal at this point. We'll leave this guy where he is and uh, that will, will allow us to kind of do a little, little uh, cheating and since we're playing by ourselves, it doesn't matter, but uh, it allows us also to uh, just go through this experience and, and see how uh, the barrage phase works for both sides and, and what the impact will be, et cetera, et cetera. So let's uh, now move on. I'm now going to move on to uh, the movement phase for the Soviets. It's their first impulse. And they're going to move, a, you know, they've moved this unit and they will now continue to move these other forces and uh, go forth from there. We'll show, share some more soon.